Hey Anita, lovely to see you. Hey Adrian. Hi. Hey Jane. Hey Anna. Hey guys. Fantastic. Perfect. So nice to have you guys here. Thank you. I'll ask for my music if that's okay. And we'll get started right away. Cool. Time. How does this sound? I'm going to serve you the most sweet, balanced, and unique cup of coffee that I have ever had. It's a dance between acidity and flavor, body and sweetness, all the way from hot to cold. Over the last 19 months, I realized something. In order to push myself and grow as a coffee professional, I needed to challenge myself and rethink my entire approach to coffee. And this is a journey that starts at the farm, because without their hard work and dedication, none of this would be possible. Today, I have the honor of representing not just one farmer in their coffee, but two. I'm doing a blend today of two contrasting coffees that I've managed to develop to have a harmonious balance all the way from hot to cold. Now, I remember the first time that I ever had Kefir Eugenoides from Colombia. It had such a sweetness and a syrupy mouthfeel, and had these intensities. It was unlike anything I'd had before. The farmer, Julian, at Finca Immaculada, he processes this coffee as a natural, but to be as clean as possible. When I first tasted it, I saw it had so much potential. But in order for me to serve it to you today, I knew I needed to find a way to express acidity through this coffee and balance some of these intensities. And then I remembered. I had a coffee while I was in Ecuador. It was at Hacienda La Florida, and it was a washed catucai. And this coffee, oh, the acidities were just sparkling and they had some really unique flavors, these botanical and herbal notes. The farmer there, Fabrizio, he has such an understanding of how his agronomy is linked to processing. And he was able to show us a whole new side to what we would typically expect from a washed katukai. I love both of these coffees, and I decided to blend them. And to be honest with you, at the time, I wasn't sure it was going to work, but I started to experiment and learn and I came to understand that I could use 60% of this eugenoides with this rich, heavy mouthfeel and syrupy notes, combined with 40% of the katukai, with its brightness and these unique flavors, the florals and botanicals. And I could get a unique balance all the way from hot to cold. And some new flavors that we didn't find in either coffee that were unexpected of raspberry and guava. I'm going to start to brew, but I'll keep on explaining my approach as I do. So these two coffees are quite unique, and they required a new approach to roasting. I kept them separate, but roasted on the same profile on a hot air roaster four days ago. This achieved a uniformity and a harmonious balance between the coffees in the brew. I'm using the Metal V60 today. I found that this brewer, with the shape and the material, helped us with clarity of flavor, like this rose note. And the recipe I'm using is 20 grams of coffee to 300 mils of water. And this is a little bit more than I would normally brew with, but I found that this really helped with the syrupy mouthfeel when cool. Now, this coffee requires a pretty unique approach to water. It's about 98.6% water. And me and my team figured out that we needed to customize our water and we found that an equal balance of magnesium and calcium was required to get the most vibrancy. The first kettle I'm using is at 93 degrees, the second at 88. And I found using this helped to give more of a juicy body in that hot stage. I'm dividing this across five pours today, each just as the bed is starting to run dry. I found that this meant I could grind coarser and have a better, even extraction through the blend. And I'd like you to please write down a few notes for me. You're going to find the aroma of rose and strawberry. In the hot flavors, again, rose and strawberry. The strawberry, both fresh and candied. 
When it goes warm, it'll turn into a soft raspberry candy that reminds me a bit of Alan's lollies. When cool, correction, when warm, we'll also have a tinned pineapple note. And when cool, it'll turn into a pink guava nectar. And jasmine. The hot aftertaste. You'll find it sparkling, a little bit like a rosé champagne. As it cools, the aftertaste becomes a little bit more like mandarin. And the acidities today, they're vibrant and lively. Mostly tartaric, with a hint of citric, and they remain so structured and integrated all the way from hot to cold. The body is juicy and has a lactic quality when hot. When cooling becomes more rich, and syrupy. And the balance, guys. This is where this coffee, these coffees, are truly unique. The balance is exceptional. And it's not only a balance between acidity, flavors, body, and sweetness. It's also a balance between the two coffees in the blend. And here, I'm going to ask you to do something a little bit different to enhance our taste experience. What I would like you to do, at three times during the cool stage, I want you to take the liquid, hold it in your mouth, just for a few seconds. Move it around, and I want you to think about three different things each time we do it. The first time, I want you to think about the katsukai. I want you to think about these vibrant acidities, these soft florals and botanicals, and in particular, the jasmine note. The second time, I'd like you to please think of the eugenoides. Think of these heavier, richer, more syrupy notes. And see more of this guava, especially the pink guava syrup. Correction, nectar. And the last time, I'd like you to think of the blend. And see how these two coffees are actually seamlessly integrated and harmonious all the way from hot to cold. And I'd like you to please evaluate the aromas today directly from the carafe. You can give it a quick swirl before tasting. And please enjoy these beautiful aromas of strawberry and rose. Looks like we're ready, guys. That's fantastic. So there's one thing that I realized over the last 19 months while we were all living so far apart but trying to taste coffees together, and that's that we're all unique and we all perceive taste and flavor uniquely. So in order to harmonize us and unify our experience, I've chosen this cup on purpose. The pink color will help guide you towards the extra sweetness, the strawberry and raspberry notes, while the weight and the texture are going to reinforce that syrupy mouthfeel when cool. And so, for that reason, I'd like you to please, when hot, take with your spoons. When warm and cool, go directly from the cup. And don't forget, take the liquid in your mouth three times and think of the katsukai, the eugenoides, and the blend. And guys, after this long journey, there is one variable that I can't control. And that's how you are going to perceive the coffee. But I believe in these coffees. I believe in the brew, and I believe that they're truly unique and exceptional. And if we want to share in more unique and exceptional experiences like these, I believe that we can't be afraid to experiment and to learn in order to grow. So on behalf of Julian at Finca Immaculada, Fabrizio, at Hacienda La Florida. My team 
and myself. I want to humbly thank you so much for your time today, and I hope that you enjoy. Time. Well done, well done. So, Matty, just come over. Hey, Philip. Great performance. Thank you. What made you choose Blend as a, a topic? Blend. It was something that it really honestly piqued my interest about 19 months ago, right after winning the Swiss competition. I started to experiment, I started to think more about it, and it was an idea that never left my head. How having one coffee and two coffees and getting the greater sum of both. Um, and really over the last especially seven days, what we managed to achieve was, was something extraordinary and really unexpected. I never thought that we would be able to get these sorts of flavors and tastes and such a unique quality from these two coffees. It really is the sum of the two. Thank you so much, Anna. Thanks, Jane. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you, Anita. Cheers, guys. Beautiful. <laughs> Great. Great. So thanks a lot. And again, put your hands together for the Compendium of Switzerland, Matt Winton. Yeah.